Thank you. Prime Minister, haven't you been made a fool by believing Jessica Whelan? Well, we see any more on the... Is it right? Because we'll, we'll excuse Andrew. Andrew today. OK, Thank we'll you. go. Thanks, Andrew. Yesterday... Um, Yesterday, we announced that a matter was going to be referred to the Federal Police, and it is still going to be referred to the Federal Police. Uh, in particular, um, the, the one image that was uh, um, totally refuted by Jessica, and sh I understand that will still be referred to the Federal Police for investigation. Uh, overnight, um, it became clear as we went through our process. I said to you all when we are in Perth, I said that when these matters come up, we will follow a process with our party, and that's exactly what we have done on each and every case. And as we followed through that matter yesterday and last night, it became clear uh, that other posts uh, there was no explanation from that was satisfactory. And as a result, uh, Jessica has resigned as the Liberal candidate, as is appropriate. And what that says is, is we're prepared to deal with these issues. Now, the matters that I raised yesterday are still matters that are going to be raised. And stand by that. Uh, but in terms of the other issues, that have become apparent and as we've undertaken further discussions, these matters were not disclosed to the Liberal Party at the time that she nominated and was endorsed as a candidate. And under our rules, if you don't do that, and if you're not straight up with the party about these sorts of things, then the party reserves its right. Now, in those circumstances, Jessica has, has resigned her candidacy, uh, resigned her Liberal um, candidacy of, for the election, and that's the appropriate thing to do. Whether, uh, from that point on, what her views are, they're matters for her. But for me, and for the party, the fact that it was established that these things had been said was enough for me, it was enough for the party, and the party has, uh, has pursued the matter according to our process uh, to ensure we got to the bottom of it and we dealt with it. Are you not embarrassed that yesterday you stood by this candidate, you stood with her, you stood alongside her and campaigned with her, and now she's been dumped? Well, yesterday we were doing with the, the information we had yesterday, and at that point, um, the other matters that have now come to light had not come to light. And so at that point, we were going through a, a normal and fair process, and that's what people should be afforded. That vote? No. The fact you were campaigning I, I'm not yesterday, and today she's gone. What we've done is taken action on the issue. That's exactly what we've done. I'm, when, when it became absolutely clear uh, that these were the comments that had been made, those comments are things that I don't share, that I don't accept, and I won't stand for. And in our party, we won't. And as a result, the candidate, uh, Jessica, has resigned. Now, and why didn't you stand by that yesterday? If those because yesterday, why wasn't that yesterday, yesterday, that information was not clear. How, how, can, how, how can... Her comments actually represent the views of some in the party. Her mistake, though, was just putting it on social media. Her views were her views, and they do not represent mm. the views of the party I lead and they do not represent the views of the Liberal Party. So why was she pre-selected in the first place? If he these, these views were not disclosed to the Liberal Party at the time of her nomination. Uh, that was confirmed last night. Yesterday. Prime Minister, Sorry? they were aware yesterday. No, they weren't, because the information yesterday. that was in front of us yesterday was, was not uh, the information that we were able to receive overnight. Yes. You've been lied to. Yes. Been lied to. Yeah. Prime Minister, this is not the first candidate you've had who's been accused of racism. Um, Penny Wong has accused the Coalition of supporting political figures such as Palmer and One Nation who hark back to the white Australia policy. How do you respond to that? I'm, I'm not going to take a lecture from the Labor Party <laughs> who in the New South Wales election, the New South Wales Labor leader said that Asians are taking your jobs. And Bill Shorten said nothing about that exactly. all the way to election day. Six days. I mean, I've heard of a six-second delay on, on radio, but I haven't heard of a six-day delay. Bill Shorten stood by the New South Wales Labor leader all the way to election day when it was clear that he said that Asians take your jobs. And in this election as well, we've had the deputy leader of the Labor Party, Tanya Plibersek, saying Indian companies can't be trusted to create jobs. So the Labor Party on this issue... Um, is in no position to lecture. And when it comes to the Labor Party lecturing on candidates, all I can say is the standard you walk by is the standard you accept. I was not prepared, and our party was not prepared, to walk by um, the standard, um, which was set by a number of our candidates, including Jessica Whelan, and she has resigned as a result. But Labor today, Bill Shorten is standing by a candidate, as you know, here in Melbourne, 
at the same time as it talks about doing the right thing in terms of domestic violence and taking action against domestic violence. And their excuse is, is that he was a 22-year-old man. Now, if you're a 22-year-old man, a young man in your 20s, that's not a defence. It's not an excuse. He may well be contrite. But the issue is not whether he's contrite. It's whether that's a standard that Bill Shorten is prepared to accept. And only Bill Shorten can explain why, he's a prep, why he is prepared to accept the young man's defence when it comes to excusing this sort of behaviour. Only he can explain why he thinks that's OK. I'm disappointed that he thinks it's OK to say it's OK for a young man to do these sorts of things, and he can explain why he thinks that's a justifiable... Can, 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 can I just add to that as well, PM? The Labor Party's candidate on the Senate ticket in the Northern Territory mm. and the anti-Semitic views that were expressed uh, by him, the views that were expressed by Melissa Park in Western Australia, the fact that just 24 hours ago the Labor Party was preferencing a candidate in the seat of Goldstein with anti-Semitic views ahead of the Liberal Party. Yeah. So the Labor Party should not take the moral high ground in this. They have nothing to lecture us about. Is it... Uh, was Miss Whelan, when these second comments have come out, is her stance that she is still not behind the comments? And she would have told that to the party, her stance. And just wait, wait. And, and if that is true, why did you believe her the first time but not the second? Well, the issue for our party is, did she make those comments? And for me, that's enough. That's enough. If someone has made those comments and they were views that they have expressed in a public forum, um, which it's clear to me that she had, then that was enough for me. Whether she's contrite about it afterwards or otherwise is not the issue for the party. Um, I won't have a candidate that has been found once we were able to go through the due diligence on these matters. I mean, remember, this only came up yesterday and we've dealt with it within 36 hours, which is what I undertook to you to do. When matters like this came up, mm -hmm. I said we would run through a process, which we have on this matter, and then we'd take a decision. Now, whether uh, Ms Whelan is contrite about them or stands by them or doesn't stand by them, that's a matter for her. Um, what I find contrasting with the Labor Party is that you can say or do anything but as long as you say you were sorry later, then you can still stand as a Labor candidate. And that, what that says to me is uh, I don't understand why Bill Shorten thinks that a man who is still, I understand, in his 20s, it's OK to, to have a different view when you're 27, but just a few years ago when he said it, then apparently that makes it all OK. I, I don't accept that excuse and I, I don't accept that defence and I'm puzzled as to why Bill Shorten would want to accept that I was just a young man at the time, defence. There won't be any more Liberal candidate resignations for well, the rest can, of the I, campaign. I will simply say to you what... The vetting process I, now? I will simply say to you what I said the other day in Perth, and that is, if issues arise, then I'll deal with them in exactly the same way. There'll be a proper process to deal with them, and that's what we've done in each of the cases, and decisions will be taken. But I tell you one thing I won't be doing. I won't be um, accepting the excuses that Bill Shorten seems to accept. Bill Shorten is accepting an excuse from a young man um, that, you know, we had the head of White Ribbon today mm. set out what the standard should be. And I think he's made that very clear to Bill Shorten about what standard should be accepted and what standard should be upheld. Bill Shorten isn't prepared to accept that standard. He's ex prepared to accept the young man's excuse um, for disrespecting women. And uh, I think when you're standing as a candidate... You know, there's free speech in this country. There's all of these things. But when you're standing as a candidate, obviously a higher standard applies. And Bill Shorten seems unwilling to apply the standards to his candidates that we've been prepared to apply to ours and take the decisions that have been necessary. Thank you.